Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio. In our last video, we got our enemy set up with patrolling so that he could detect obstacles and also ledges. However, he's really not doing much at this point. In this video, we want to set things up so that he can actually detect the player once he comes within range. We'll have him pause with a little animation to denote that he's found the player. And then when the player leaves that range, he will go back into his patrol state again. And then of course, be able to re-enter the next time he finds the player. Now we're going to get this all set up this time, but this is also going to reveal a bit of a problem with the traditional way that we're setting this up, which is creating a monster script. You'll notice right here that my patrol state is starting to swell, and at this point we've only got two states in here. We're also starting to get into a problem where I now have to detect whether I'm in player detected state before the movement happens, and vice versa. Now as we get more states, we do not want to have massive if statements for if player detected, if patrol state, if attacking, if jumping, etc, etc. And so once we finish this, we're going to have need for a better setup. And so the next video, we're going to look at creating a state machine, which can, which will just be a script that decides which state to operate at any given time. That said, we're gonna save that for the next video. And for now, let's get our enemies detecting the player. All right, so before we hop into any of the code, let's get our game actually set up. At the moment, our enemy here just has one child game object, and that's our ledge detection point. We're actually gonna add a new one here, and I'm gonna use an exclamation mark. Now you don't have to have an exclamation mark to sort of telegraph that he's entering a new state, but it's a pretty common convention. And if you wanna add an animation of your own at some point, there's room for that as well. I should also note that we will ultimately animate this enemy, and I will add that a couple of videos in once we've got a few different states set up. Now, I've just got this exclamation mark, which is just, well, it's exactly that, a sprite of an exclamation mark. And so I'm just gonna grab that and make it a child of my robot. If I go to my position here in the transform and reset everything to zeros, it'll set it over by my robot, and I'm just gonna pull it up above his head. All right, essentially the way this is gonna work is I just wanna make a simple animation so that when I turn on this exclamation mark, it grows and also becomes more visible. So the way I'm gonna do that is head into my animation here and we're gonna create a new animation. I'm just gonna call this one exclamation mark. And so I'm gonna just hit record and I want this to take place over about 30 frames, so about half a second. At the start here, I'm just gonna head over to my sprite renderer where I'm going to actually make it completely transparent. So just move my alpha to zero. And then over here for scale, I actually want it to start at about 0.5 of its size. So it'll be small and invisible. Halfway, so at the 15 frame mark, we're gonna take our color and I'm gonna make it fully opaque. So all the way to 100 on the alpha and we'll move it up to full size. Now in the last 15 frames, I'm just gonna have mine grow just a little larger to about 1.2. All right, and now if I hit play, we get this nice sense of it growing and becoming more opaque. I'm gonna unrecord and I'm actually just gonna put it a little higher above his head. All right, with that done, if we take a look in our animator, you'll notice that this is now the default. So all we have to do in the game is turn off this exclamation mark. And then when we turn it on, it will animate growing to full size and then loop through that animation. All right, with that out of the way, I think we're ready to get coding. So we're gonna head into our patrol state. Before we go any further, I do want to do some organization though. At the moment, we are doing all of our obstacle detection here in the update method. And if we now add player detection, our update method starts to get quite crowded. And so I wanna separate that out. I'm gonna come below both of our update methods here and we're gonna create a new void called check for obstacles. And what I just wanna do is grab all of this logic from update and we'll paste it in there. Now in our update, all we have to do is call check for obstacles. And it will call this method every frame. So it will have the exact same effect. It's just now we get a cleaner looking update and we can kind of tuck these check methods down below. And in fact, we're going to be adding a new one here, a void check for player method, which we'll get to in just a moment. Before we do that though, and now that we've got some better organization, let's head up to the top here. At the moment, we're gonna to continue to use this ledge detector transform, which is just an empty object in front of the enemy that we begin our detection from. However, we do need a new layer mask. We're gonna look for the ground, look for obstacles. We're also gonna look for a player layer. The one other thing we need to add up here at the moment is how far away we wanna check for that player. So we've got our raycast distance and obstacle distance. Let's add our player detect distance as well. All right, at this point we can head to update and let's actually call that check for player method. 
And so essentially at the moment, we will always be looking for obstacles and always looking for the player. However, we've separated these two methods into separate areas. And the nice thing about this is that if we run into problems with our code down the road, say we're not finding obstacles, we don't have to sort through a mountain of code to find the issue because we know the issue will be right here in this method. All right, now checking for our player is actually going to be a lot like checking for an obstacle. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually grab this logic here, and I'm just gonna copy and paste that down into our player layer for now. Then we'll look, take a look a little closer. So first, we're gonna make a variable which is gonna hold the information of what our raycast hits. Now we're not looking for an obstacle anymore, so we'll call this hit player. So this keeps track if it hits the player or not. And the way it finds the player is it starts at the position of our ledge detector. It's gonna to go to the right. It's going to go, not our obstacle distance, but we're gonna put in here our player detect distance. And instead of looking for something in the obstacle layer, it's gonna to look to see if it hits anything in the player layer. Now, if it does hit something, we're gonna to need to check. And so down here, first of all, we only need one of these checks because we're only checking for one thing. So essentially, if the hit player, and so here we'll just restructure this. So instead of being null, we're going to put in true. And what's going to happen is if our raycast hit player actually finds the player, so if it's true, then something is going to happen. And we're going to have to define that logic. But now we've done our job of checking for the player. Now we actually need to define, well, what happens if we hit the player? And so for that, I'm actually going to create a coroutine. And here I'm going to call this one player detected. So this is what happens if a player is detected. If you haven't worked with coroutines before, they work much like methods in that you can call them and it will run the logic. However, these ones allow for pauses and um, manipulation of time. And so up here, if we do our detection and we hit the player, so if it's true, we want to call this coroutine. So we'll say start coroutine. And then in brackets, we put the name of it, player detected. And just like declaring a method, it gets brackets. Now at this point, we're just gonna run a quick check. So I'm just gonna put a debug.log and we're just gonna type in player detected. Now you'll notice that it isn't liking that at the moment and that's because a IE numerator needs to return something. Usually we put void in front of a method which means that it's not gonna have any return. It's not trying to solve a problem or find any kind of an answer to something. An IE numerator, however, needs to return something. We're gonna return time here. And that might seem a little weird, but the way we do this is we're gonna say yield, which just means stop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna return new wait for seconds. If you haven't ever worked with time pauses before, this seems like some weird syntax, but essentially what it does, it satisfies the need of the coroutine to have something returned, and it creates a pause. Now, at this point, I'm going to put just, I'm gonna hard code in one second in here. And to be honest, that's not going to have much effect for us. We'll detect the player. It will call this coroutine. It'll say player detected, and then it will wait one second before it does anything else. However, this pause is something we're gonna need a little bit later. So that's why I'm building it in here, and it will make sense as we go. All right, so just some really quick setup here in Unity. First of all, I wanna make sure that my player is actually designated as being on the player layer. So I'm gonna to go to my layers here, click add layer. I'm just gonna create a new one called player. Then just go back to my player and make sure that I actually assign that layer to him. And I don't need to change the children. Then when I go to my robot, I just wanna make sure that he knows that the player layer is in fact the player layer. All right, with that done, we can give this a test. Now remember, not much is gonna happen at this point. We're just gonna see in the console that he's detected our player, but at least it will let us know that our code is correct so far. And when he gets close, oh, you'll notice he had to get right to me. And that's just because I forgot to actually set the player detect distance. Let's make it say five. The other thing right now is you remember we said that it's detecting to the right. And so it's only looking on his right at the moment. And so when I'm on his left, you'll notice the console's not printing. But when uh, he gets really close, my arm is on his left. So it starts printing. I can now go over here, clear this out. And it's detecting, but over here, nothing. All right, that's actually working, well, more or less as intended, though we've got a little bit of work to do here. All right, so back in our code, there's a couple improvements we're gonna make before we actually put in our player detected logic. So first of all, let's make it so that we can actually see this thing. So what I'm gonna do is come down to the very bottom here, and I'm just gonna create a new method, and we're gonna call this one on draw gizmos. And so specifically, we want to create a gizmo, and we're gonna draw a ray. 
And this is going to mimic our raycast so that we can actually see where our enemy is doing his detection. So it's going to originate at our ledge detector dot position. And now at the moment, if we were to do like our other where we have vector 2 dot right, we could do that, but then it would only ever go to the right, which is the problem we're already encountering. And so what we're going to do is add some logic to check whether it should go to the right or the left. You remember that we have this facing right boolean here, which keeps track of our direction. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something called the ternary operator. And so we're going to type facing right, question mark. And then what we'll do is if facing right is true, we want to be right. Otherwise, we'll put this symbol, it will be vector two dot left. And we also want to define just how far this is going. And so let's put this into brackets, that's figuring out our direction. But then we want to multiply that by, and I'm going to put in player check or player detect distance. All right, we can close that up. And so that's our first problem fixed. Now, while we're here though, let's also pop up here and just add that ternary operator in here as well. So instead of just going to the right, we'll type in facing right, question mark. If so, vector two dot right. And if not, vector two dot left. Let's save that and let's just make sure that's working. All right, so first off, you just want to make sure that your gizmos are actually enabled. You may have them turned off, and that's just this little icon up at the top here. When I click that, it turns on gizmo, so you see my light, my particles, things like that showing up. Now I'm just going to go to my player detect distance. I want it to detect up to 5 meters, and you look, we see now this goes 5 units long. We can see his detection range. Now when I hit play, and this won't show up in game view, so I'm just going to click on scene view here, you'll see that when he turns, the ray turns with him. And at this point, I don't think he'll quite reach my player. And so he'll just keep on his merry way. All right, we're almost done. We just actually want to get that exclamation mark playing. And we're also going to make our enemy halt. So he's going to like pause and show that he's detected the player. So let's scroll back up to the top here. And to begin, we're just going to add a couple of new variables. So first off, I'm just going to create a, another public float. This one will be detection pause time. We're also going to make a public reference here, and this will be a public game object reference. And this is going to be to our alert, so in my case the exclamation mark, so that we can turn it on and off when we want it. Finally, we're just going to make a bool. I'm actually just going to put it up here actually with my other bool, so we'll make a private bool. And this one is going to be player detected. This will let us keep track of whether or not the player is currently detected or not, so that we can stop our movement. So first off, let's move down to our fixed update here. This is, remember, where all of our movement is happening. We want to make it so that if player detected, and then we can just put all of this into brackets. And so essentially, this makes it so that he will only do his movement if the player is <laughs> not detected. Um, so if he's not detecting the player, he'll do his normal movement. If the player is detected, then this will get canceled, and he will just not have any velocity added. Now there's one problem though, because he's still gonna have his momentum. So he will have been moving in a direction and he's gonna continue to move when he detects the player. And if there's no friction, he would move indefinitely thanks to Newton's laws. So let's take a quick move down here. And what we wanna do is if the player has been detected, one of the things we wanna do is we wanna take the rigid body, which remember we called RB, that's our variable, dot velocity is equal to, and we're just gonna do vector two dot zero. So this will immediately halt his movement once he detects the player. Now I'm just going to take this debug here, and I'm actually going to move it down to the very bottom. So we're going to halt our velocity, but the other thing we want to do is we want to actually stop the movement. So here, as soon as the player is detected, we're going to say player detected is equal to true. So we know it's true. That will stop our movement from pushing him forward. We'll then set our velocity to zero, so it will halt him in his tracks. And we're going to get our alert, which remember is just the game object for our exclamation mark. And we're just going to put set active. And then in brackets, we'll put true. And this is just going to turn on that game object, which will automatically play the animation. We're now just going to change this as instead of saying player detected, he will perform all of his player detection stuff. He'll stop. The alert will pop up. And let's just down here type in the word charge. As that will be our next state that we add will be a charge and attack state. Now, this should be working now to detect the player. However, we also need a reverse option. So once the player moves out of range, we want to do the opposite. So we're going to actually make another version of this. This coroutine will be another IE numerator. Only this time we'll call it player not detected. So once we're back out of range. Now this time what we're going to want to do is we're going to pause right at the beginning. 
So essentially, once the player leaves range, it'll give one second to the player to decide whether he's going to be moving away or closer. So we don't get this awkward where the player hovers on the edge of the detection range and the enemy goes back and forth really quickly between detected and not. This buys a second of transition time in between. We'll then say player detected is equal to false. This will allow our movement to start back up again because that if statement will no longer be true and it can now, well, this will now be true and it can now run our movement. And finally, we're just going to turn that alert. We'll say set active false. So we'll turn it back off again. Now at this point, we've pretty much got everything up and running like we should. However, I'm going to just make one other little change. You'll notice up here we made this detection pause time and we just want to put that to use. At the moment, I've got some magic numbers going on here. And so here we're just going to put detection pause time. And then I'll just copy that and paste it down here. So let's save this. All right, back in Unity, we want to make sure our enemy knows what the alert object is. So let's grab that exclamation mark and put it in there. And we're going to make sure that it's turned off to begin with so that it only turns itself on once it's found the player. You also want to pick what your detection pause time is. I'm going to leave mine at that one second we had before, but you can explore different times and try them out. So first of all, now if you wanted to, you could go to scene view while it's playing. And while looking at our enemy here, you could take a look at the player detection distance and just try out some different numbers. Now, however, once my player runs on over there, he detects the player, he stops in his tracks, we get this exclamation mark playing, and a second later, he calls charge, which later on will translate into him actually doing some charging. At this point now, the player could run away. And when I get back, you'll notice, oh dear. All right, so really quickly here, the um, thing I was just missing is Right now we have this check for player, which if it our raycast hits the player, it turns on player detected. However, we forgot to add the else statement. So if it doesn't find the player, in which case we're going to go start coroutine player not detected. Now we could leave it like that. However, the one thing I don't want is I don't want to be calling not detected all the time when it doesn't find the player. We just don't need to be running this coroutine all the time. So let's make this an else if and so we'll only call player not detected if player detected is currently true so we can just put player detected all right at this point things should be working where he detects the player once you come within range but then if you leave that range he goes back into patrol mode when he finds the player detecting again all right that's working really actually quite nicely I hope you found this one helpful. Now, just again, you'll notice that our code has gotten to be quite swollen at this point, and we've only got two states. So next video, we're going to set up our state machine to make this more organized and easy to read. I hope to see you in that video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.